Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Party. A few weeks ago we stitched a design called Concentric Squares and it was pretty slow and time consuming because you had to break thread with every single square you stitched. Well here is a much easier and faster design to stitch called Square Spiral. It's basically the same texture, nice square shapes on your quilt top, but you get to stitch it as a spiral so you don't have to stop and break thread. So let's jump on the machine. I can't wait to teach you how to quilt this with your walking foot. So I'm getting started with square spiral and I have marked these first starting lines. And this is the same for all of my spiral kind of designs. I like having those lines marked because the walking foot is fairly bulky and it's sometimes hard to see those first starting lines. And with the spiral, the first ring of the spiral shape is the most important. And I've already reached a point right here where I can start using the edge of my walking foot as a guide. So you really don't need to mark very much, just maybe one or two rings of the spiral, and that will be plenty. So I'm using the edge of my walking foot as a guide, and what's that that's going to produce is it's gonna produce a half inch scale. Scale is the distance between your lines of stitching. Okay, so that is spacing out a half of an inch between those lines. And that's a good scale to stitch on if you're wanting the design to really stand out and really show up. And maybe the project is fairly small. And also you really want to really punch it up a notch with texture. You really want it to stand out and you want to do an extra good job on the quilt. This is not a scale that I would use for quilting, let's say, a massive bed quilt. That would be pretty time consuming, not to mention pretty challenging, because look at how much I'm having to rotate the quilt around, and I'm not really gaining much length here. For every line that I do, I'm only expanding by a half of an inch, so it's gonna take a while to quilt even this sized square. I'm working with a 14 inch square here. So that's one of those things that you just really have to think about. How much time do you want to spend on your quilt? And then plan accordingly. If I did not use the edge of my walking foot as a guide, I could instead use, let's say, a piece of tape. I could um, put tape along each line. That would help me space out the lines. I could use a guide on my walking foot. And you can find a video from last week. I was using a guide to quilt matrix. So definitely check that video out and you can see how working with a guide works and get some tips on using that. So scale is really an important aspect of quilting and it really determines the length of time you're going to be quilting your project, how the quilt will feel, is it going to feel kind of dense and intensely stitched, really secured, is it going to feel soft, you know, a lot of that comes into play with how close those lines of stitching. And you know, I can already tell you, if I quilted this on a one inch scale, put a guide on my walking foot and just expanded the lines that much more, it would be that much softer, you know? So these things are, are important to try out and play with. And you know, you try stitching it on different scales. Try quilting it on a half inch scale. Try quilting it on a one inch scale. Feel the quilt sandwich and see what you like. So much of this is about figuring out what you like, what you like to see on your quilts, what you like to feel from your quilts. And then with that knowledge, then making decisions actively on your projects. You know, uh, deciding that you want the lines to be closer together on a baby quilt so that way it holds together more firmly and it's more of an heirloom uh, quilt and that would last for many more years. Now that's the major reason why we quilt our quilts and stitch through all the three layers and that is because it holds the quilt together securely. So really quilting density is all about holding those layers together securely and then the you know longer your quilt lasts, the more those stitches, the closer they are together, the more durable your quilt's going to be. And that's really where we, you know, comes from hand quilting, uh, the kind of sign that a quilt was very uh, intricately quilted, you know, the number of stitches per inch, like 11 stitches per inch or even smaller, like 18 stitches per inch. Really intense quilting held the layers of the quilt together and that was seen as uh, making the quilt better and uh, going to last longer over the long term. 
Now, that being said, I have quilts from my grandmothers that were barely quilted, you know, that were quilted with lines, you know, six to eight inches apart and by machine, which was pretty cool. And they still held up. I mean, they're not in the best shape and I don't like to use them too often because I don't want to tear them up, but they still lasted too. So don't feel like you have to quilt the stuffing out of your quilts in order for them to last the test of time. So you can see just how fast this square spiral is. And I'm kind of just eyeballing these direction changes. You might be wondering how I'm doing that so consistently. And basically I'm able to look at it and I've been quilting a lot, so I'm able to eyeball it and know that that's the point that I wanna stop on. But you know, I can also just grab a ruler and measure a half of an inch from that point will be where I wanna change direction there. You could also mark a diagonal line radiating out too. That would be a good guide to help you turn the corner. Another good design that's very similar is concentric squares. And it's basically the same idea of stitching squares, only they're solid square shapes. And we broke thread with every single one. So that's another cool design. It's got the same style of square texture. But this is so much faster, as you can t see, you know, we don't have those thread breaks. I'm not constantly having to stop and break thread and deal with those thread breaks. And so if I had a choice between concentric squares and square spiral, I would probably pick square spiral, especially if I was in a hurry. If I needed to get something done quickly, I would pick this design and I'd stitch it on a two to three inch scale and use a guide on my walking foot to help space that. And that quilt would be knocked out possibly within a day, you know? That's an idea. If you want to try this out on a real quilt, uh, I really think the Jellytown baby quilt, it's a pretty much a two day project. Dad was able to piece one. I just was like, hey dad, test this out, see what you think. And he pieced one in about a day and then sat down and quilted it. And he quilted it in another day. So that's a two day baby quilt. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look ridiculously simple. It has a really nice look to it. So please understand that you can quilt faster. You can make a baby quilt in a, in a few days or less. It really just depends on what choices you make with the piecing and quilting design, how you decide to apply the design and put it on your quilt, the scale, the distance between the lines of stitching, all of that goes into it and all of it adds up to create the finished quilt. And here's what it looks like whenever I finished Square Spiral. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot quilting Square Spiral with me today and you're ready to give it a try either on a small quilt sandwich like this or on a big quilt. But you know, if the idea of quilting a big quilt is intimidating, you can always take your practice sandwiches, cut them up and put them together. This is called quilt as you go. And it's a great method for keeping your project small on your home sewing machine. Now, if you'd like to join in the fun and create this quilt behind me, this is Marvelous Mosaic, and you can find the quilt pattern for this in my book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting with Leah Day. So you can join in the fun. We're gonna be quilting out all of the designs from the book, all 30 designs, and then we're gonna connect them together to create this beautiful Marvelous Mosaic quilt. So I hope you'll come and check out the book at leahday.com slash walking foot and join in the fun. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel on YouTube so you don't miss the next video coming out soon. Until next time, let's go quilt.